Hello uh, YouTube, this is APC, and today we're making another platformer tutorial. This one was suggested by Philip Coolable. He asked me to make Sonic Slopes and Paths. And these are both rather complicated, so today I'm going to cover slopes, and not next tutorial, but in some other tutorial in the near future, I'm going to cover loops. So to get started, I'm in the basic platformer right now. We're going to change our player sprite to... And now next, we need to create our slope. So call it SPR slope. And we want to take up the entire width of the room. And the default width of the room is 640 pixels. And to make 206 height, that hit matters less. Okay. Thank you. So now, take your pencil tool and draw your slope. Now, the more smooth this slope is, the better this will work. So I'm just going to draw, let's see, reasonably... Nice. Yeah, that ought to work. And I want to make it black. You have one mini and you're dead. So there's our slope. Now, let's quickly add our slope object. And make its parent our OBJ solid thing. Of course, don't forget to set this right. Also, don't forget to make slope solid. Now, our player object. We are going to need to change around this a little bit. Now, this part right here is fine. Just leave it. This is what we need to change around. So, a uh, circle. Uh, just in the moving to left and right won't, won't work anymore. Because if it's on the ground, then we want its direction to adjust so that it will be able to stay on the slope. So, what we're going to do is... But we still want this to happen to the ear. So, what we're going to do is we're going to... Split this up a little bit, mm -hmm. and we want this section of the code to happen. Actually, I'll just go through the left and I'll go through the right later. I want this section of the code to happen only if we're in the air. So then I'll put down right here if place free x y plus one, then we can do this section. What's up with you being so but close? So if we're not in the air, then we gotta do the new code I'm about to show you. Which will take place right here. This signifies when you press the left button and you're not in the air. Okay. So I'm gonna create two, two variables. First one is I'm gonna call s, which is the same as speed, except I don't want to use speed because it's built in variable and do things that I don't want it to. So we're going to have set to be equal to 6. And next variable we're going to create is dire. Or we're going to start at 270. What we want to do, 270 is pointing directly downwards. We're going to have it start trying to go downwards, but if it can't go downwards, Sorry. it'll slowly move the direction more to the left until we find one where it can move along the slope. So what we do, what we do that is we're going to create a loop. That loop is going to be a while loop. So we want to keep looping as long as we would hit hit a solid if that direction were to go. So the way we're gonna do that is if not place free. And now I'm gonna teach you a little bit of trig stuff. So let's say we have our object and we're trying to test whether at a 45 degree angle and five pixels away, we're trying to test whether there's something whether we can go that direction. So then if you look at it at, as what we need to add to the x, add to the y, it becomes a triangle. A right sided triangle, no less. So now I'm going to tell you how, to, how we can use trig to solve for x and y. So if we have, just know that sine of an angle equals the opposite side of the angle, and then divided by the hypotenuse. So if you plug everything in, that's sine of 45 equals y divided by 5. And then if you simplify that, that is y equals 5 times sine 45. So now we figured out how to solve for y, and we can use similar logic for solving for x. Then if you plug in our, our s variable, and I put down data, but in our, for our code it's the dire variable, then you get x equals s times cosine data, and y equals s times sine data. 
So that's how we know what we need to add. So if we replace free, we're testing x plus. Yay, worth it. S times cosine dar. And then y minus s times sine dar. And the reason why we use a minus for sine and a plus for x is because in Game Maker, the axes are flipped for some reason. So the higher y gets, the more further down you are. So it's a little bit weird. Also for the dire, these trig functions don't work with regular degrees between 0 and 360 like we're used to. They work with radians. So I'm not going to explain radians. I'm just going to put down the code to convert dire to radians. And that is times pi and all that divided by 180. I'll just copy that down there here too so we, it's in radians. Nick, you blew. Okay. So it's going to keep repeating the, this code we put here until it finds a spot where um, it can move to. So we're going to do dire minus equals 5 every time. So start at 270 and then become less and less until we find the right angle. Once we found it, we'll move to the, this spot that we, f we found. So I'll just copy this. This will be y minus equals that and x plus equals that. Now let's take away this right and we'll just copy our left down and repeat it. So you change it from left to right, and then these so become plus four instead of negative four. Actually, let's change it to plus six. And then right here, just needs to add five each time rather than so take away five. Set. So now that we've got that taken care of. Let's go into our room. Let's delete all the all the default stuff and put the player up there and put our slope down. All right, there we go. Our slope's down. So now let's test it out. See see how well our player adapts to the slope. All right, so here we have it. When I press the right button, lose perfect for the slope. Press left button, move perfect for the slope. If I jump, it'll land on the slope fairly well. So, and that's how you make something move the slope. It should uh, give some effect as um, they use in Sonic, and uh, yeah. So I hope hope that makes sense. All right, that's all for this tutorial. I'll take it off the list. If you have any other suggested tutorials I can add to this list, by all means suggest them, and, and I'll get them done. Also, one more announcement. I am going to stop making. I'm going to make one more Tuesday challenge video. That's going to be it. So from now on, I'm going to, the footage in the credits is going to represent your challenge. So if, if you wanted to challenge yourself, see if you, you, you figure this out, watch the credits and the footage you see there if you try and replicate that. All right, so I hope you um, learned something from this video. I'll see you guys next time.